find something you have interest in and that there's market demand for right where the overlap is that's where you want to go so if i have a passion for peruvian throat singing you know i might have a, a passion for that but no i don't i have icelandic tap dancing though yes really? um, no i'm just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to the Millionaire Mentorship Podcast. We talk all things real estate, uh, business, entrepreneurship. Today, I've got a very special guest, uh, social media guru, uh, Dakota Robertson. Welcome to the show. Howdy ho. Happy to be here. Appreciate you. And you hello to everybody things. listening. I know. I'm, I'm like an 80 year old at heart. I got all sexy <laughs> peachy king. Sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a character. <laughs> I got soup cans in the background here. I don't know if people are listening can see it, but yeah. Yeah, dude. Tell me your story. What's what's up with you? Uh, yeah. So I guess I won't go all the way back, but I mean, the start of my entrepreneurship journey was back in September 2020. I was in the crypto scene. I was a crypto degen and I was on Twitter a lot to keep up with the news and stumbled across the crypto degen. I don't even know that. A degen, like a degenerate. That's a kind of like a joke. A lot of us crypto guys will say, yeah, we're just degenerates. Just okay. Buy magic internet money. Yeah, like totally fit, totally fake money, right? Like you, can yeah. just, you get a website going and you're freaking, you're in business, right? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Well, it's like, you know, the Federal Reserve too, they just like print money out of the air. So <laughs> it's like, you know, they're back a bit more, but yeah, it's a, it's a weird concept. Um, it, it, I mean, it's the same thing. You bring up an excellent point. It's like, yeah, the Federal Reserve and crypto, the only difference is one is backed by a government. The other one is back by like whatever whoever decides to get on like sam bankman fried and stuff like that yeah like well naval has a great saying uh was it socialize the losses and forget the saying or something but it was like you know when the banks fail it's everybody's problem but when you fail that's your problem you know financially so it's just kind of a broken system but it works well for the people at the top. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so whatever. If you can yeah. control the politicians and you can control the makings of the monetary system, like we're all indentured servants at the end of the day, if you control the taxes too, right? Like, 100%. You know, yeah. yeah well, well, like crypto is the same way. It's like, you know, they're saying it's, you know, this new system, escape the system and all that. But all it is, it's like these big banks or these big, you know, rich people, they're just buying all this crypto and then they're selling it to retail. So it's like wherever you go, there's going to be a system, but you just profit a lot more off crypto. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, the only way I would do crypto is if it was my own crypto. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not invested in anybody else's just for the fact and I back my real estate. But I've seen so many just scams out there and just like people lose their asses and I know you can make a bunch of money, but it's just the wild, wild west, you know, and yeah. you got some unsavory characters, but tell me about your journey. Yeah. So I, I got on Twitter because of crypto. I came across this section of Twitter it's called money Twitter. And it's basically a bunch of young people talking about online business, you know, making money. There's a lot of like different kind of subsections in there, but I, I saw this course come across on my timeline. It was a $40 course and it was like how to grow a Twitter audience. And I thought that was interesting. I tried different stuff in the past to make money yeah. and I was like, oh, okay, I'll give this a shot. And I said, screw it, pulled the trigger, paid $40. And at the time I was in my second year of college. I was going to go be a high school English and uh, psychology teacher. And that course really just introduced me to that that crowd of entrepreneurs and it was young dudes and they're talking about how they're making 10k 50k 100k a month and it's just like holy shit and right. i was learning a lot from these people i resonated with their story and the more i i was just consuming their content and kind of you know experimenting with creating content the more i was like oh this is like a real thing and i was i was just getting more interested in it and then with the parallel of college, you know, I, was, I, I remember this one course I had to take for my degree. It was totally unrelated to my degree, but the, the professor, she was like, first day, she had this PowerPoint presentation. She's, she's like, all right, class, I want everyone to go around and I want you to mime a weather system that you're feeling. And I was just thinking in my head, I was, I was laughing. I screenshotted the, the PowerPoint, <laughs> like mime a weather system that I'm feeling. And it was yeah. just kind of at that I moment, I just, yeah, I just, I just, 
I lost a lot of faith. In, like I was already losing a lot of faith, but that's when I was like, okay, like I'm learning more on Twitter than I am from college. And I, I made the decision, okay, at the end of this semester, when it's done, I'm just going to drop out and I'm yeah. going to go all in on this because I was at such a big pain point. Cause I worked all these different jobs. I used to be electrician, security guard, medic, delivery driver, server, all these things. Yeah. And I just got to this big pain point where I was, I was looking around at everyone around me and they're all miserable and you know, they're, they're broke and they're struggling to get by and they're working for people they don't respect. And I was just yeah. looking, I'm like, I don't want that for my future. And I know I'm at a point in my life where I was 22 at the time, like the w risk to reward ratio will never be greater than now. You know, I could screw up for 10 years straight and I'd be okay. That's but, smart of you to say. Not a lot of guys realize. I, I went big like when I was young too. I'm 46 now, but I definitely like, I was like, hey, they're like aggressive. Yeah, let's go. You know, so yeah. tell, tell me a little bit more about how do you crack the code on Twitter, man? Like I haven't put any energy into that, but I know it's super hard. Yeah. So Twitter used to be a lot easier to grow a few years ago. Um, I think now it's... I don't know if it's whether because there's like less bots or the algorithm changes or whatever. I don't really care. Um, yeah. But like to grow on Twitter or any social media platform, it comes down to two things. It really comes down to content and it comes down to distribution. So what do I mean by content? Okay. Content, you know, why do you buy anything from someone on social media or why do you follow anybody on social media it's because they're valuable in some way and right. the way you know you have all these people like oh give value give value is like that's all they say it's, it's a cute sound bite but what, what, what does that mean what does giving value mean right well solving pain points or helping people get to a desired outcome like really that at the end of the at the end of the day that's what everything is like yeah. we're all just like chemicals right? right so if you can solve people's pain points then they're like, oh, damn, this is very value, valuable to me. I'm going to follow this person. Or yeah. if you can get them to a desired outcome, they're like, oh, that's very valuable. And so the way I think about this is, okay, how can I give information or like, how can I take my experiences that I've learned and how can I package it in a way that's very simple and easy to understand that people can take action on and put it in action in their own life? Like I'm sure on your podcast, you have many people that are experts and they're giving advice and they're, they're helping people, you know, solve some yeah. issue in their life or get to a desired outcome. Right. So I, the way I think about it is all these people are on pain Island and on pain Island, they're they got like yeah. tranchels on them. They're like burning. They're it's just whatever is happening on there. There's no, no bueno. Warfare. It's like, yeah, warfare, dude. yeah. You know, it's just no fun. And yeah. they want to get, they see the naked European supermodels on Pleasure Island and, you know, they're having a good time. They're chilling. Can you wash my feet, dude? <laughs> yeah, I can see it. You know. But it, it's like, you got these like Pain Island, Pleasure Island. And the way yeah. I think about it is how can your content be the bridge from pain to desire? Yeah. That's really all it is. And that's, that's what I think is valuable. So when you create content, I always keep in mind, okay, what's the reader's pain points or what's the desired outcome? And how can I craft content that gets them there? And then there's going to be different formats for that. So, you know, maybe it's Instagram and videos will work better for that. Or maybe it's LinkedIn and, you know, written posts will get or deliver that better. Right. Um, so you really got to keep in mind the psychology of the person and, and how you deliver it. And then are you, there's... Are you on YouTube? Yeah, I just started on YouTube four oh, months man, ago. that's a freaking mother of a, a deal to grow on there that's a trend I, I just reviewed all my stuff today and i'm like yeah. i am missing every like <laughs> like thing on this thing that's like the toughest one to grow in my opinion that and instagram for me at least i think i think short term it's harder to grow but i think long term man it is unreal because the 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 lifespan of content is so large. Like I posted content four months ago and that's continuing to grow. Right. And then you think about, you have a, a video just pop off like a recent one, then they're going to check out all your videos and then all those videos grow a lot more. So I find like at the start, it takes a while, but then once you just nail it, just, Man, I haven't nailed amazing. it. I'm three years in and I've hit a couple, I've hit like one that hit 600,000, but most of my stuff is still like skimps. Like, you know what I mean? Like you look at a mm -hmm. like hundred views, 800 views, 700 views. And it's like, 
I know a lot of guys who have like TikTok followings of 2 million, Instagram followings of 2 million. They're like, I quit YouTube. I'm done. Like, I can't get there. Like, it's, it's like, it's the, and then you look at guys like, you know, Graham Stefan and stuff like that. So it'd be interesting. I looked at your content. It's really good. I thought you did an excellent job. And I was like, man, this guy doesn't post a ton and he gets a ton of like engagement and followers. So you, you believe, does it, you believe more in quantity versus, uh, or sorry, quality versus quantity, right? Yeah. When it comes to, when it comes to youtube like well my main thing is like do as much as possible but don't sacrifice quality and for me that's one a week i think that's a good pace one video a week one long form a week right. but yeah like with youtube i think i think of mr beast like you know that guy knows everything about youtube but he talks about it's better to have you know fewer videos that are higher quality you know put more effort into it even if maybe if it's one a month do that opposed to like doing every day and it's like you know it's more that might have just clicked with me like the all the all the sh like i've just been i'm just such a grinder i just like you know what let's just bang it out let's <laughs> bang out another one you know what yeah I mean? yeah well it's like you can be more deliberate with it and 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 more focused and, and you just like if you take like a little bit more time to think about a headline or a lead or just the first 30 seconds then it just it pays dividends because they get more bought in so i put it so much effort into the first minute of my video and then once they're bought in you know it just makes it way easier but i mean touching on content i can kind of go deeper in it and it might like help you with youtube yeah, let's, as well let's let's go let's let's go deep man that's what like you're the expert let's let's go yeah so what i've noticed after growing my personal brand and and actually did this for other people or I'd grow their personal brand for them. But what I've noticed is there's really three pillars of content that, you know, applies to every single social media platform. That's how I'm able to grow on all these ones where it's, I call it the gap framework and it kind of bridges the gap from a stranger to a follower to a buyer. And so the G in the gap framework stands for growth content. And this is content that touches on stuff that's top of mind for people. So think about back when ChatGPT was really popping off and really trending. Yeah. So if I'm a writing account, then I can make content that is around ChatGPT. So, you know, here's how I get eight hours of writing done with four hours using this ChatGPT framework. From a fitness account, I could talk about here's how to use ChatGPT to create a meal plan or, or right. a fitness plan. Right. And what that does is since these are trending topics, they're getting searched a lot. And the algorithm wants to keep people on the platform. So it's going to give people what they want. So if you talk about those, those topics, but you tie it back to your brand, yeah. then it's going to, it's going to rank you better in the algorithm. People are going to click on it more because it's top right. of mind. It's popular. Like same with Andrew Tate. Like you can make, um, like popular figures. Like, you know, you could be yeah. a fitness account or, or uh, a marketing account. Like if I'm a marketing account, here's Andrew Tate's marketing. Um, yeah. here's how he's like scaled to 2 million a month with his, here's his marketing plan fitness yeah. account. Here's how, here's Andrew Tate's diet and like, you know, how you got shredded or something. So it's like just finding things that are top of mind. It could be events, it could be people, it could be, uh, just trends, like different stuff like that. And you can yeah, use so Google just, trends to Google, like look at it. So Google trends go there. Yeah. Tell me about like that. that I've never really taken a deep dive on that. Yeah, so you can you can, you can go to Google Trends and you can look at you know what's trending in a particular country continent, uh, like what's related to like a certain search term, um, stuff like that. I don't really I just kind of know what's trending just from being on social media so much, so you can kind of get a grasp on that. But if you want to get really granular with it, you can use Google Trends. But I find like that's one of the best ways to grow early on social media because it's just going to rank you better in the algo. It's just, you know, top of mind for a lot of people. And then if you deliver value in that, in that piece of content, people are like, Oh, this is actually really useful. Cause you know, they're either going to have interest in what you're talking, like the, the trend that, or they're going to have interest in, you know, your niche or both ideally both. Yeah. So they, they come for the, the growth content or the you know the trending thing but they get so much value from the piece of content that they they follow you or then it grows your account yeah so it's, like it's, it's tough man i'm, I'm listening to what i'm i mean i 100 agree with everything you're saying mm -hmm. yeah so that's a that's the g in the gap framework the a is authority content 
So like think about why people buy stuff. It's like they they know, like, and trust you to some degree. So the the growth content you know, gets people to know of you. The authority content gets people to trust you. And this type of content is what shows your competence. So if I'm a fitness account or a fitness personal trainer, I'm going to create content around, you know, here's how you make a meal plan. Here's how, here's the best exercises for chest. Here's the best, you know, X, Y, Z for your Y. Um, so you really want to, you really want to create content that shows your competence. And this is going to be come down to maybe case studies. Maybe it's going to come down to, you know, your own personal story, how you went from pain point to desire, um, just different stuff like that. Anything that's really actionable and shows people how to get a specific result, that would be authority content. And then there's personal content and personal content gets people to like you. So we have no is growth content and trust is authority content and then like is personal content oh that's personal, right. personal content is sorry i'm gonna call you to decline that so You're personal good. content is is when you share your worldview your stories and anything like your personality yeah. so <clears throat> that's that's something that's lacking from a lot of people like imagine there's two businesses and you know, one business owner, you know, he's got a good offer and, you know, it's, it's checks all the boxes or whatever. And then there's another business owner, exact same offer, but you know, you just like them more because they got yeah. this personality, they're goofy, you know, whatever they, you just see yourself in them. You're going to go with that person every time, even yeah. though, even if that other person has a better offer, if you resonate with somebody, since we're emotional creatures, more, more times than not, we're going to go with the people we like more. Yeah. And it's just like the 1, human element. Yeah. So like the first thing I do on every, every social media platform, like one of the first videos or pieces of content I make is my personal journey, like my transformation journeys, like how I got to where I am today. Yeah. So with YouTube, I made like a whole video on my personal story. Like, like everything from childhood is a bit long, like 30 minutes, but I, I knew yeah, that I can when tell you're super detailed, man, I could like, like that sticks out. Like you're, yeah. like, you think like an engineer, right? Is that, yeah, it's weird. Dude. I like, I I'm, I'm definitely more of a creative, but I like try to break it. Just try to systemize it. Like I'll try to create frameworks. Cause like, you know, if you're just like, Oh, I don't know how to do it. It's like, how can I replicate this? You know, how can I do this again and again and again? So I think I just do stuff and then I, reverse backwards and I'm like, okay, but why did that work? So, so what's the long-term plan, brother? Basically, I, well, like I was going to college to be a teacher and I really enjoy teaching. I get to do that now with my coaching program, but uh, I just want to continue doing that. Like I just enjoy scaling my business and teaching what I'm learning with writing and online right. business. Um, so I just want to scale my, my social medias to a, a crazy amount. And then, What's uh, the goal? I don't know, man, I'm in this game for the rest of my life. So I, just, you think I, so? I don't see, like, I don't think I, I don't see why I couldn't do this to, to get to like, I don't know, 20 million at least followers. I don't know. 30. So much pressure when you like, I mean, for me, I never wanted to be on social media. I only got on because there were so many guys that were full of shit. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just being honest with you. And I'm like, yeah. you know, there's a lot of guys out there that are telling a story that don't know what they're talking about. And like, I've been doing this stuff. And I was like, I knew that I was going to be, and, and people are nasty on social media. Like that's one thing that like, I would tell, like, I wish I did early on was not read the comments. Cause no. you will find the one, the one zinger, like that your insecurity of insecurities. And they're going to be like, dink, you know? And so how do you deal with that? Yeah, I think at the start, it, it used to bother me more. But I mean, like, I, I just kind of think about imagine the place you have to be in life where you go out of your way to comment some negative stuff on somebody's post when you have absolutely no idea who they are. <laughs> like, I, I just feel empathy for them, kind of. I kind of feel bad for them because yeah. imagine how depressing or sad your life is if you have to do that. So think about. You think Elon Musk or Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos would ever do that? It's like, no. Elon, you, for, Elon for sure, though. He's, he's yeah. a good troll. <laughs> but, but like, <laughs> you know, it's like those people, They the way they're trying to feel good about themselves is bring other people down and they must be in a shitty spot if that's the case. So if I ever get comments like that, I just kind of like poke fun of it. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. Like, I don't know. Like, I'll find something funny. I just won't take it seriously. I just, I just don't. 
Dude, just... I, uh, I did a video, Dakota, with uh, these guys who, like, burned out my parking lot. And I, like, was telling them how, like, these guys, people were calling me a Karen for complaining about these people, like, leaving tire marks all over my... And I got, like, threats, like, I'm going to come do this. <laughs> like, it's the craziest shit, the internet these days. I mean, just, it is wild. I was on Twitter, you got, like, porn. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, like, the number one porn site. So, what, so your plan is to grow your coaching business. How do people get a hold of you if they want help growing their social media? Uh, yeah, I mean, I open up cohorts every few months, but I mean, like the main thing is probably just subscribe to my newsletter. Uh, that's where I promote my stuff the most. If I have some, I don't really promote, promote often, but if I do have something going on, they can find it there. Uh, so if you go to God, what is my newsletter? Dakota dot beehive, uh, with two eyes, um, and no E. Just go, just follow me on Twitter. That's where, like, go, that's go, where. Go to Twitter. Yeah, just follow me on Twitter at Wrongs to Right. That's that's the best place. That's where. Yeah. I, that's where my hometown. <laughs> what, what, is, what is it? Wrongs that's my to hometown. Right. Yeah, Wrongs to Right. W R I T E. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, yeah. man, any like any uh, tips for people who are young like yourself that are trying to like grow their social brand or like get ahead? I mean, like going from a guy who's going to be a teacher to like this entrepreneur is like a, a totally different journey, right? Like you go mm -hmm. from making money from struggling to get by being a teacher to like making all this money, you know, it's, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing I've noticed that that really separates successful creators from unsuccessful ones is and i went through this too at the start was you know they're, they're just trying to be a broad self-improvement account because you know they read a lot of books and they get inspired yeah like, oh i want to help other people do that too but in reality it, you know a lot of people aren't going to buy that from you unless you're tony robbins or like these big you know life coaches so the yeah. biggest thing i see that people fall into the trap is yeah, they're just creating really broad content. Sounds like it came from a fortune cookie. Very motivational. You yeah. know, it's fine and dandy. I, I create like cheesy self help content too, but <laughs> you can't have that be your only thing. Like you gotta, you gotta help That's people. <laughs> yeah, hundred. <laughs> but you gotta help people solve their problems or get to a desired outcome, and that really comes from learning a skill that, like, a, a hard skill that you can, you can either apply your mind or i mean it's the internet so it's got to be like some kind of some kind of knowledge work right so i mean i would suggest learning like find something you have interest in and that there's market demand for and yeah. like the, right where the overlap is that's where you want to go so if i have a passion for peruvian throat singing you know it, i might have a, a passion for that but uh, no i don't i have icelandic tap dancing though yes really? um no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, like, skills. I might have a passion for that, but there's not going to be market demand and I'm not going to be able to grow on social media. I'm not going to be able to charge money for a service or a product and it's just going to be crappy. And then the other side, okay, what if I get into maybe SEO, but I don't have an in interest in it. I'm not going to dedicate the time or energy to it to get good at it and actually charge money for it. Or if I do, I'm just going to hate my life. So you want to find something there's, there's, you have interest in it and there's market demand for it. And that takes research. Um, you can look at, um, these chat GPT forums or like look at what other people are selling on social media, but typically it's going to fall under, can you make people more money or can you get them more fit? Like, and there's also relationships. Like, can you help? help them improve the relationships right. that's, but that's pretty much it can you make me money and can you make me look good exactly yeah All right where do you see yourself at my age 46 years old you're a young guy now like where do you see yourself like are you are you flying a jet are you freaking uh, um, are you like are you got 19 kids i mean what's going on dakota uh i'll probably have three or four kids i'll definitely have a home i'll be settled down in one spot i mean right now i'm traveling a lot I have a wife um and i'll be creating content still i'm 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 pretty confident i'm just gonna keep doing this till i die i just love creating content That's like simplifying crazy. stuff I, I absolutely hate it i did it. <laughs> <laughs> like i'm totally opposite and i yeah. mean maybe i mean i like i like me meeting interesting people like yourself 
Like that's the most, the podcast is the most enjoyable. Like, but for me to go out and write like a YouTube video, I have zero desire to do it. So what we try to do is I enjoy showing people the process of what I do. So that's why when I was listening to you, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely on the P side of what he's talking about. Like I'm creating stuff that I like and, you know, I definitely have authority. I probably have that going for me, but maybe I'm missing the G part. So that was very helpful for you breaking that down for me to code. I, I truly believe that. So you're going to have a bunch of kids, three or four kids. Are you going to be like, Business? Do you see yourself as like a business mogul, or how does that look? I don't want to. I don't want a team. Like I, I like the solopreneur route. Like I just like being responsible for me. I mean, I have contractors <laughs> I work with, but man, like I, I don't really have a desire to scale like a thousand person team. Like I just want to live a good life. I want to have a, like a good family and just chill and like go travel a lot and just do cool stuff. But no, like I just. I like the simple, simple life. I don't want to be a big business mogul. A lot less stress, man, for sure. I can tell you, I yeah. got a lot of things going on. And yeah. Like, man, you know, you're you spending fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month in payroll, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like you got mouths to feed. It's true. You, a lot of people count on you and it is a lot of stress. Um, I don't mind it, but you know, my best advice to you as a young guy, you seem like you're very intelligent. So I always like want to add, just buy a couple pieces of real estate. That's all I would say. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause you buy, you said like, you said double down now and put in the work now. I bought houses as soon as I possibly could. And that's what made me, you know, as rich as I am, just because I was able to like, I just was super disciplined about buying houses. Like, and that's not that hard. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to like, shred yourself and get super fit. Anybody can buy a freaking house. You know what I mean? And uh, I did that. And the other thing is like, you sound like you're doing it right now. Travel the freaking world, man, while you're young. It's like, yeah. it's amazing. It shapes you as a human being. Like you, you have so many amazing memories and so many people put it off. Like just do it. And like for you, that's awesome content, right? Like, so yeah. like I, I've taken my family around the world right now and, and me and my wife's uh, saying is YOLO, man. Like so many people just forget that you're going to die. Like, and it could happen at a young age. So yeah. do what you want and record it. Yeah, man. Totally uh, enjoyable to talk to you. To cut it. How do people who are listening right now uh, get a hold of you besides Twitter? Are you on Instagram? I think I did see you on that. Yeah, I'm on Instagram at Yo Dakota. I, find, I got unbanned. Someone tried to ban me. <laughs> I couldn't get me. <laughs> and then LinkedIn, I, I Dakota Robertson. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. And then YouTube uh, at Hey Dakota or Dakota Robertson. You'll find me. All right, man. Any words of encouragement for the youngsters out there trying to trying to grind it out, trying to make a change, trying to find like you said the pain, like people who are like unsatisfied with their their lives. What what advice? What self help advice would you give them? Yeah, I mean the the biggest thing for me was I was always willing to lean in, lean into discomfort. I think that's what separates most people. Is like they'll like oh discomfort's bad, but if you reframe yeah. it as like oh discomfort like you wouldn't go to the gym like and just lift five pound weights and expect to get jacked you gotta place stress on yourself and then you build back stronger so it's uncomfortable at the start actually at every stage but you just learn to get more comfortable being uncomfortable yeah there's a nice little sound bite the fortune cookie um <laughs> but uh like lean into it and i i think you do that for six to 12 months and you'll look back on your life and you'll be glad you did it's it's one of the most rewarding things because you can look back like, yeah, I did that and you feel good about yourself. That's, that's great advice. I think, it, um, do you have any, like, you know, I was just in Mexico. We stayed on the 23rd floor and I'm like always so nervous around heights. And I'm like, looking this up, I'm like, all right, man, how do I like, and then you realize you're like, well, I say that I'm afraid of heights. Like I say that out loud. I say that internally. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop saying I'm afraid of heights. And I'm going to start saying like, I'm going to get comfortable. Right. And I think like, so when it comes to facing your fears and things like that, how do you, how do you uh, deal with those challenges? Like, cause you said, you just said lean into it and made me think mm. about that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll kind of give you a like, brief story about myself. Like I used to struggle with social anxiety Yeah, and it was, it was because I played this narrative in my head because I got made fun of for being a fat kid as a young, young guy. And I would just play this narrative like, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm shy, blah, blah, blah. And I'll just play that narrative over and over. And then since I identified with it, my actions would follow that. And since yeah. my actions would follow that, other people would see it, reinforce it. And then you got that loop. And it wasn't until I read the book, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, that I, I realized, oh, I'm not my feelings. 
Like that's just a feeling and I can choose whether or not I adopt that as my identity. So when I, when I started challenging the belief that I am socially anxious, when it came up, I would stop and be like, Oh wait, you know, that's just a feeling. I am not socially anxious. I am not anything. Right. That is just a feeling. And when I, when I stopped identifying with the feeling, I created this separation and I recognized it for what it was. It was just a feeling and when it didn't solve it overnight, but it was, it was, I was building that, that yeah. pattern recognition and rewiring my brain. And over time, it was and behavioral therapy is what that's exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, I got to rewire my brain and I, was, I started to go the other direction. Like, okay, let's look at all the times. I was confident. Okay. I, you know, I got, I asked that girl's number at the coffee shop. I, you know, started, I started yeah. talking with that stranger, the old guy at the mall, you know, X, yeah. Y, and Z. It was like, Oh, okay. Like would a, would a socially anxious person do that? No, right. I would actually yeah. say a confident person would. Yeah. And then you start building that identity and yeah. then you just go the other direction. And, you know, so it's like really kind of getting really logical with things and you, you, you cause we can get very emotional and we get caught up in it. And I, I still do at times, but I got to yeah. stop and pause yeah. and I'm like, Oh, you know, like I'm feeling this right now, but that's just a feeling. And you know, I could just choose to not identify as that and then go the other way. Out of everything you said, I think to me, that advice is a really good piece. I think like understanding that, there's a guy that I like a lot. God, I can't remember his name. Joe Dispenza. That's what his mm, name is. Yeah. And it's he's got this book, and I listened to it as I was mowing my lawn a bunch of times, and it's it's called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And it talks exactly about what you just mentioned there, Dakota, which is like, hey, man, like we play the bad clips back in our head. Like we play all the times it didn't happen. Like we don't remember that, but we remember the stuff that like the one time I fell down and embarrassed myself on the steps, right? And everybody saw me or I can remember in Mexico just recently, like I'm totally the guy who will like humiliate myself. So I'm really good at that actually. <laughs> but like, I like, I remember tripping and like, you know, when getting off a boat and falling flat on my face, it's like, yeah. You know, and my attitude is like, one thing I learned as a young guy was like I took a train across the country from Washington to Mississippi. And I remember getting on that train and there was a girl to my right. And I was like, thinking, oh man, if I approach this girl, there's a chance something could happen on this train ride. I'm gonna be on here for like five days. And it was like, in my mind, it was take a left and go sit by yourself or take a right and something might happen. And I took a right and it was a good train ride. And, and you know what I mean? Like, and I remember just thinking at that moment, like I just made the decision to be confident, right? As a young guy, I made the decision to get uncomfortable and talk to this girl. And then I made the decision to go a little bit further. And like, we had a great tr train ride. Like, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. everything is about those decisions. And, and so many of them are made in our head, right, Dakota? Like before they even had a chance to mature and be the, be the true person that we are. I think, it, I think you're right, man. It's mastering those emotions and mastering those, those feelings and so many times I, I, I struggle with that with my kids. It's like, do I be super tough on them? Like, do I like let them cry or do I tell them to toughen up? Like, you know what I mean? Like, where do I go? Where do I turn them into like these tough people that can handle their emotions and control their emotions at the same point in time, you know, not be a complete hip hypocrite, you know, cause we all struggle with things even, you know, and you're trying to teach your kids to be the best. Dakota, this is great advice. I really appreciate you coming on here and sharing this and sharing your story. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to leave the audience with besides telling them to give you a five-star review and sharing this video with any of their uh, nearest and dearest friends? Uh, yeah. If you don't share this video, you're going to step on a piece of Lego and you're going to die alone. So make sure you do that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, sure no, I just, I just, I just, uh, on the way to bed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's a never ending hell. Uh, no, like I, I just appreciate you having me on and appreciate y'all listening. And yeah, it was, uh, Really cool. All right, man. Uh, make sure you give us a follow. Make sure that you take action, face your fears, and make social media content. You'll get instant feedback about yourself. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Did you ever want to invest in real estate? Did you ever want to live the life of your dreams? Did you want financial freedom? We have a free Facebook group, the Millionaire Mentorship Facebook group for real estate investing. Make sure you join. The link is in the description. If you want to schedule a free call with me and my team and you actually want to start, I would suggest you do so. We have helped 
Hundreds of people changed their lives and all they had to do was get started. They booked a call with me and my team and they got the ball rolling. And I'm so confident that if you don't get your first or next investment property within the first 90 days, you don't pay and I'll give you a thousand dollars cash. That's how confident I am. Obviously, you gotta take action. You can't just do nothing and expect that to happen, but that's life. Life's all about taking action. Make sure you give this podcast a five-star review, share it with a friend and take action.